Hello everyone, I'm, I'm Vikram P. Maduri here. I'm an SAP architect and in this video, I'm going to discuss with you all the basic, very basic questions that we might come across in our, in our interviews. No matter what level we are doing this interviews, whether it might be a fresher, whether it might be a middle level experience guy or even a senior most, senior most guy in SAP. It, it, it is it is applicable for all all uh, SAP consultants of all the modules whether it might be a BAP uh, basis or and the net administration part or uh, you know uh, even if it's your functional FICO, MM, SD, QM, WM any of the functional modules or even if it's uh, on the network technologies or in this industry specific uh, I, i'm trying to make a very generic uh, uh, you know uh, generic session where exactly we are going to discuss all those questions which are you know in general for all the, all the modules let's move on and uh, see what are the basic questions that we might come across in our in our interviews and which we need to be you know uh, uh, updated with so what exactly is ERP? We all know what exactly is ERP, but we should be telling it in a in a, in a, in a proper sentence and in a, in a proper manner in a short form uh, in the interview. So it's very important how we present ourselves. The presentation is very important, right? So now enterprise resource planning is a concept. It's a, it's basically a concept. Any software that enables the management of all the departments of an operation, in a huge organization is known as an ERP software. Any company can come up with an ERP software. ERP software has a set of set of you know uh, functionalities which any company manufactures a software with those functionalities. It can be called as an ERP. It's as simple as that. Now, what is SAP? SAP stands for Systems, Applications, and Products in Data Processing. It was a company started in 1972 in a place called Waldorf, and it's it's in Germany. Yeah, you all know that. But main focus on providing solutions for enterprise operations. Now, here when we say SAP is a company, we also refer to SAP when we are when we're talking about the software. Let's just like, I've given an example here, like when we are talking about BMW X1 car, we, we just keep that X1 aside and we talk about like, you know, a BMW car. So you know, BMW, it's not just a company name, it's also a brand name. SAP also is similar to that. We, when we are referring to, uh, you know, SAP software, we normally call it as SAP instead of, you know, the versions on which we are working on and all. Uh, outside SAP especially. Yeah. So who are the founders of SAP? Uh, even though we know that you know uh, there are five uh, you know founders of SAP, we need to remember their names. If at all, if if if, it, if this question pops up, it would be a very awkward moment if you couldn't answer this. It's a very simple and basic question. So, who are the founders of SAP? Dietmar Hopp, Klaus Chira, Hans Wellenruder, Hector, Hasso Platner, and Klaus Wellenruder. These are the five uh, you know ex IBM colleagues which they came up and uh, started this SAP because they couldn't you know, they couldn't uh, implement their vision in IBM so they came out of IBM and started their own company called SAP in Germany so what is ECC ECC stands for ERP central component it is the next version of SAP R3 software now uh, uh, I mean like uh, it, there might be a question of what exactly is uh, SAP R3 as well okay so ECC stands for ERP central component it's a software version and we do have ACC 5.0 and 6.0 versions and in ACC 6.0 we have a lot of EHPs, enhancement packages. EHP, what exactly do you mean by EHPs? Enhancement package and we have uh, up to seven uh, enhancement packages uh, which are available in the market. Okay, what is workflow? A very basic question, we should be knowing, knowing this. A routing tool uh, uh, in SAP that automates a particular task or a series of tasks and involves people wherever needed. So workflow can be used for forwarding documents for review or approval. For example, if you have applied for a leave and the leave have to be approved, immediately the manager gets a mail in um, in the mailbox. He gets a, a he gets a you know a screen where he can approve or you know and reject your uh, request. Those kinds of things can instantly happen outside SAP. So basically, workflow is also used to integrate SAP and non-SAP systems and um, you know make the work tasks done easily. For example, a requisition that needs to be approved is sent to the appro appropriate approvers inbox. Workflow is also used to route journal vouchers, credit card charges, and other documents in SAP Extra. 
तो एसएपी नेटवीवर एसएपी नेटवीवर इज द अंडरलाइंग टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर ऑल द प्रोडक्ट्स इन द माय सूट एसए माय माय एसएपी सूट ऑल द प्रोडक्ट्स इन माय एसएपी सूट कैन रन ऑन अ सिंगल इंस्टेंस ऑफ नेटवीवर नेटवीवर मेक्स पॉसिबल एक्सेस टू एसएपी डेटा यूजिंग सिंपल एचटीटीपी प्रोटोकॉल और इवन मोबाइल एज़ वेल व्हाट इज आर3 रियल टाइम ट्विटर आर्किटेक्चर वी ऑल नो दैट इन अ लाइव सिस्टम दैट डस प्रोसेसिंग एंड प्रोवाइडिंग द data within no time and what exactly is three tier it basically represents a uh, three tiers in the sap software those are database tier application tier and presentation tier what is a dispatcher sap dispatcher what are the functionalities of a dispatcher sap dispatcher is the control agent which manages the resources of for the r3 applications equal distribution of transaction load to the work processes management of buffer areas in main main memory integration of presentation levels organization of communication activities it's a very important uh, concept that we should all be knowing as an sap consultant wherein we also have to know what exactly is a dispatcher dispatcher is like a heart of the application server application tier and uh, it will have uh, the fu- these basic functionalities uh, uh, backed into it so what is the work process work process is where individual dialog steps are actually processed and the work is done each work process handles one type of request it's like uh, you can call, you can you can consider a work process as a you know if you consider the entire process of application layer as a call center uh, in the call center whenever you make a call to the call center whoever is available what whoever whichever can call center agent is available they will be taking, taking the call similar to that each each agent in the the call center can be referred to as a work process in the application server where exactly the work will be done whatever work you are assigning uh, whether, if let's say there is a request from one one guy uh, saying that uh, you know you need to delete a particular record and uh, another guy is updating some record each task will be done by different work processes at a, at any given point of time the name various uh, work processes for r3 system there are like dialog or online process leave one request at a time a background task will be will be will be processed in that we have started at a specified time and we can we can schedule background jobs uh, and uh, we can we can make that trigger at any given point of time update a primary or secondary update uh, process and nq lock mechanism uh, is a uh, you know uh, a process that we have spool generated online or during background processing for printing these are the various t- kinds of work processes that we, we might have so what are the role and page areas role and page areas are sap r3 buffers used to store uh, user context uh, process requests sap dispatcher assigns process request to work process as they are received if the work process is unavailable the process requests are queued in the role and which areas the so page paging area holds data from the application programs role area holds data from the previous dialog steps and data that characterizes us user now if at all if you if you are not very clear about this concept i would suggest you to go back and check out my video on real time three tier architecture uh, in the three tier architecture i'm i'll be explaining you more in detail about these all uh, concepts now what is a spool request spool requests are generated during a dialog or background processing and uh, are placed in in the in the, sp- the spool database with information about the printer and print print format okay so the actual data is placed in the temporary uh, sequential objects now, what are the different database integrities there are different types of database integrities that are uh, no uh, there in the database so there are semantic integrity relational integrity primary key integrity value set integrity foreign key integrity and operational integrity these are the different types of integrities that we we'll have in the data so what exactly is hana what is hana and what is hana suit hana is an appliance so anything which we call as a appliance our mobile phone is an appliance because it's a combination of hardware and software anything which is a combination of hardware and software can be called as an appliance so it's combination of hardware and software with many revolutionary concepts like in memory database uh, hana suit is ecc running on sap hana database okay, so hana suit was launched later initially hana was launched and then we have the hana suit and we also have the x1 so ecc or e- enterprise core component is a set of erp tools for uh, core business functionalities like 
finance logistics warehouse and, and management and sales and distribution this is this is a basic uh, you know definition of what exactly is ecc now if we have to remember the you know different versions of sap hana these are the these are the you know it's a snapshot which enables us to remember in long term what are the different versions of sap that we have to read so in 2011 sap launched a sap hana memory platform and then in 2012 sap has launched sap business warehouse uh, powered by sap hana and uh, right now we have bws 1.5 available on hana running on hana so it enables us to do the real time analysis and real time reporting and then sap started up the sap business suite powered by sap hana so real time business oltp olap and oltp are together and sap hana enterprise cloud for sap business suite on sap hana so sap simple finance powered by sap hana it was launched later in, it was in 2014 to be precise no aggregates single source of truth so basically we all know that aggregates were uh, basically introduced to improve the performance but since sap s4 sap hana platform already takes care of the performance issues in um, using the in memory technology row based and the column based storage and the uh, different technologies that we already are using so aggregates have been removed from the you know sap simple finance uh, powered by sap hana so here we can take real time decisions oltp and olap are also together and we can have reports are based on the real time financial transactions then in 2015 sap launched sap s4 hana suit sap s4 hana and simplify data model new user experience the new user experience can be experienced through fiori app so the look and feel what we see on the screen will be through fiori app so that's what is uh, main focus uh, which has been laid on on in this particular version and advanced processing choice of deployment you can have different types of choice of deployment like uh, you have uh, deployment on on premise uh, out uh, cloud and hybrid uh, deployment uh, options for a particular organization or enterprise to go ahead with sap s4 hana what is sap s4 hana sap s4 hana is sap's next generation business suit uh it's meant to replace sap ecc erp with a simplified tool design specifically to work with sap hana platform and differences between ecc ecc and s4 s4 hana what are the differences between ecc and s4 hana is one another inter interview interesting question so we have simplification of data has been done in the s4 hana compared to the ecc within certain process into a single table by replacing the core tables uh, uh, this this can be achieved so Uh, we have lot of uh, lot of instances in each and every each and every module of uh, you know functional module of sap where uh, we are uh, you know uh, cutting all the data from various tables which basically had to be stored in different tables into a single table so in in uh, for example we have is uh, cdoca table where all the you know financial data is been you know, stored due to the principle of one some traditional functionalities are no longer you know available in the in the latest uh, you know s4 hana platform so with over 3000 cds views uh, currently available embedded reporting has been released so within the sap s4 hana environment sap bw and bpc can be embedded within the new product sap s4 hana enables certain scenarios to be performed not all however it will not replace bw and bpc at this point of time maybe in the future so so can we upgrade from ecc to hana no we can't upgrade from ecc to hana we can move from ecc to hana either by a system conversion from an ecc solution including suit on hana or a new install the root of uh, the root root to sap s4 hana is achieved from ecc to s4 hana there is no upgrade path but we need we can we can do the conversion of uh, you know uh, installation and what is sap is software uh, industry specific stands for you know is stands for industry specific and sap has introduced lot of industry specific solutions for different verticals different business verticals wherein we have uh, you know for banking we have a, a industry specific uh, software solution for oil and gas for utilities and for retail we have different you know industry specific solutions which we which, are, which an enterprise can implement and you know get the solutions quickly done there are more than 40 plus in industry specific softwares that we have 
so it, there are certain uh, industry specific um, you know softwares which are very popular and these are the most popular ones the oil and gas and um, utilities retail 